Assalamu alaikum, masa al khair, sabah al khair, good morning, bonjour, kalispera, kalimera, wherever you are in the world. How do you say it in Polish? Dzień dobry. What he said <laughs> until I yeah. repeat it somewhere. <laughs> uh, wherever you're tuning in from the world, thank you and welcome to Nubia Fest 2020. This session was supposed to be at 11. It is my mistake and, and delay with everything that is going on. But I could not be more excited to hear what uh, Maciek will be ch sharing with us here. I had the privilege of meeting him in Paris in 2018 at the International Nubian uh, Conference, the International Society for Nubian Studies uh, Conference, which happens every four years. And this was something we were talking about. And it's so amazing to now see it come to fruition and hear the developments of, of uh, where it has reached. So without further ado, I will go backstage and I will yield to you. Please, friends, wherever you are tuning in from the world, let us know. Put it in the comments and also share this video. Help us promote all this fantastic work that is being done to protect, preserve, and promote Nubian heritage. Maciek, thank you so much. Hello, my name is um, Maciej Wyszgo. I'm from the Polish Center of Mediterranean Archaeology uh, of the University of Warsaw. And um, today I'm going to uh, show you our latest product. Um, it's a website called um, Virtual Nubia, and it contains um, digital um, reconstructions of uh, of uh, Nubian buildings. Actually, we started with uh, a monastery in Ghazali. So um, I think I'm going to switch to uh, to the website. Um, all right. So here it is. Um, that's um, uh, that's a monastery in Ghazali, and that was the first um, the first complex which was reconstructed uh, uh, in frame of the project um, founded by um, the Polish Ministry of Science, um, the Grand Dialogue. Um, so uh, Ghazali is a monastery um, located in the desert in Bayuda. So probably most of you um, know that uh, the monastery. Uh, was, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Can we make the other version because this is actually quite small, uh, like the way you showed me earlier? Yeah, I know, but I'm going to switch to the model later. It's just, okay. the, okay. model, it's just the website. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Yes, perfect. Okay. Um, so um, I can't make it. Okay, I can of course make it um, larger. So this is the uh, the picture of that um, the monastery. It was excavated by a Polish mission from. Uh, Polish Center of Mediterranean Archaeology, uh, led by Alto Lobulski. Um So um, it's important for the, the Nubian heritage, of course, because that's the, one of the best preserved um, monasteries in the middle uh, Nile Valley. Uh, and it was uh, entirely excavated. So um, the mission lo uh, located uh, several important, like the key features of the monastic complex. There is a church, there is a dormitory, refectory, uh, even latrines, um, meal, uh, oil press, uh, and so on. Uh, yeah, so it's important from this archaeological point of view. Uh, but uh, in front of this project, um, we um, like reconstructed that monastery. We, I mean, a team of architects and graphic designers uh, 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 connected with that uh, mission Ghazali. So now I, now I will switch to that um, reconstruction and uh, we'll tell you more about that. Um, okay, so this is the, the reconstructed complex. Um, the idea appeared, uh, I guess, during the um, uh, excavations um, in Ghazali. 
so um, the first two buildings which were reconstructed were um, the churches, uh, three buildings actually, uh, dormitory and uh, refectory. Uh, architect, architects from that mission, um, Agnieszka Wujes and uh, Bian Navilzgo, then Szewczyk, um, were appointed with this um, task to uh, reconstruct those key buildings in a monastery, monastic complex, just to show it to like the broader audience. Um, so I met girls in Cairo um, like two years ago. Uh, they were working on that. It's uh, I would say it's not so easy to reconstruct those um, those buildings because, uh, as you uh, saw previously, and uh, I will show you that again, um, the monastery was preserved to this extent. Um, so what they did was to uh, compare all those. Uh, I mean, first of course they documented all the um, architectural remains, and then they compared that with. Um, some other complexes, monastic complexes in Nubia, like Casa Luis, and uh, like the most important was, I guess, uh, Ambahadla in Aswan, uh, the monastery with very well preserved um, dormitory. Um, so this reconstruction is actually based on um, on these uh, analogies, and of course, also um, girls spend a lot of time um, like experiencing the the Nubian vernacular architecture, because um, not in the upper Nubia, but in the lower Nubia, some of those architectural solutions like um, vaults and domes uh, are still in use. So um, when you have these archaeological remains, uh, it's much easier to reconstruct that um, with, uh, with the help of still living um, no architectural Nubian tradition. So uh, what we can do on that side, um, I'm not going to spoil you the fan of uh, exploring the site, the, the website. So I'm just going to tease you somehow with that, uh, with that projection. Mm, so what you can do is um, like have a look on the, the whole monastic complex with this orbital view. But also uh, there is another one. Um, you can experience the space by um, using the first uh, person view. And you can actually move uh, inside. Uh, with adjusting the speed, the walking speed. So now uh, we are really inside the monastery. Um, this is the this is the church, and uh, I'll tell you something more on the courtyard. Um, you can walk freely um, all around. Uh, to make it available through the website, we um, must decided to get rid of some details, unfortunately, because the sketchup, which is the platform where we keep these models, allows us only to keep the models of uh, like 200 megabytes. Um, so the most difficult part for graphic designers was, was actually to make uh, the models small, but still uh, like available for uh, and quite pleasant for, for an eye. Uh, that's why you cannot enter the particular buildings from this view, but I will show you around. Of course, of course this view is also not the, the whole uh, fun of uh, Virtual Nubia, uh, because it's in, the technology, in VR technology, so the virtual reality. Uh, when you have um, this VR headset, you can actually uh, like totally immerse into that um, that um, monastery just to move in here. Um, so it's very realistic um, that way. Uh, but the aim was to share it with it with like a broader audience, uh, even in the countries where internet connection is not so fast. Um, that's why these uh, models are so light. Uh, so I hope that uh, in Sudan, for instance, it it will be possible to, to experience that uh, without downloading files, so, which are like, I don't know, a few, several gigabytes. Um, so apart from these analogies, um, sometimes, of course, our architects get to guess something or even decide to uh, put something in places where it wasn't probably located in reality, just to, to give um, viewers uh, the idea how the monastery worked. Uh, that's why, for instance, we have this oil press over here, and the only arch archaeological remain which remained after that press was that stone. So um, this is the like Egyptian analogy. Uh, 
when you are experiencing experiencing that space, it's um, quite obvious that it's easy to get lost in here. But I will just uh, walk with you uh, right now. Later, you can explore it by yourself. And so we are going through these the most important um, buildings. This is the dormitory, a uh, pretty big one. Um, later, we will enter the, the interior. And now we are going to the latrines. Um, which was which are also quite numerous in Ghazali Monastery. Um, that's why there is and this assumption that it was a pilgrimage center connected with healing of some uh, digestive problem problems. <laughs> uh, so these are the latrines over here. Uh, they, they are also in, uh, reconstructed from the inside. Um, you can enter uh, that. Um, so that's all for the exterior. Now I will show you how to get to, to the inside. Um, so there is this uh, guided tour possibility where you can move to uh, particular buildings with better quality. Because as I said, those models are quite uh, light. And so we need to give up some details. Uh, but also we divided that for um, several smaller parts um, with much better quality. So churches, for instance. And here we can visit um, interiors of the buildings. On each uh, page, you can compare the actual um, archaeological remains with the reconstruction. So unfortunately, also, with my internet connection, you need to give me a um, few seconds because it's loading. So I think that reconstructing the churches was like the, the most difficult part uh, because there are a lot of details. It's very complicated architecture. Um, now we are moving here. Um, First person view, and we are inside the, the church um, in Ghazali. Um, you're probably surprised that there are no um, wall paintings inside. Um, of course, we could guess what should supposed to be on the walls because the uh, liturgical program and iconographical program of the of Nubian churches is, is quite well known. Uh, but in Ghazali, unfortunately, there are no remains of. Um, of wall paintings beside those um, those imitations of, uh, of bricks uh, in that part. Uh, so we just decided to uh, not guessing um, and leave the, the pages, the, the walls blank. And um, here are some additional inf informations, information on when you click on that uh, info points, um, what inscriptions. For instance, because the church in Gazali was filled with inscriptions on the walls, covered in inscriptions. Um, there, are, there are a lot of them. Um, just want to give you some uh, like backstage information of the reconstruction. Um, these we know that there was this altar screen, but these actual poles are um, inspired by. Um, inspired by. Um, Poles from Faras. Uh, also, this textile is not from Ghazali. Uh, sensors are from Abdullah Nurki, I guess. Uh, but we needed to make these choices actually not to leave like empty spaces. Uh, that's why we borrowed some of the, the stuff we could expect inside and put it here on the very uh, exact location, but uh, not necessarily um, from the same uh, archaeological site. Uh, so we can go behind the, the screen. Uh, so there is Centronum. Uh, everything is uh, reconstructed in, uh, in details. Uh, I'll just give you some more examples of the, of the interiors. Um, so uh, we're going to move to dormitory. Uh, for instance, um, yeah, navigation is quite uh, quite easy, I I think. Mm, so we yeah, I encourage you to to see it for yourself. Um, yeah, this is the dormitory how it looked like um, before the reconstruction. 
Um, so only the the first floor. Um, probably there were two, there were like there was also the second floor. And we are moving inside. Okay, and uh, just for your information, uh, something is wrong with the connection or with the model. Sorry for the blobs, it sometimes it sometimes happen. Um, oh, all right, sorry, it's uh, the fall of uh, the platform, I guess. Um, but you can see that for yourself. Uh, just also for your information, here's the, the icon you use to switch to VR mode. So if you have this goggles, you can like uh, move uh, move inside. Um, so okay, let's go to uh, a factory for instance. Okay. Okay. So yeah, it's here we have um, a refactory. Um, the size of the dormitory is also based on the information from. Oops. I don't know if it's, it's my internet connection, which is probably also bad, or um, Sketch have experienced some difficulties. Okay, yeah, so we can we can move around also in here. There are those um, those benches where the monks uh, said they were eating um, all together in the in the single space. Uh, look at the window grills, they're also reconstructed uh, on the, like uh, on the basis of uh, archaeological finds. Um, so here you can also um, enter this the whole interiors for yourself. Uh, I'm not going to spoil you the fun. Um, so the next thing I was going to present you was um, how the uh, the reconstruction was done. Um, so as I told you, that was um, the team of uh, architects and graphic designers. So there was a lot of work actually. Uh, especially when you see at the archaeological remains, which are quite scanned in uh, most cases. Uh, so, based on those analogies and some uh, architectural features like springing of vaults, springing of domes, uh, thickness of walls, uh, which uh, gave us some clues about the um, about the, the fact how the roof uh, was constructed. Uh, how tall were the buildings? Um, there were also these analogies from Anbahadra, um, Castle Ruiz, and vernacular Nubian architecture. So what uh, was made later, of course, after documentation, um, they also looked through all the window grills and uh, finds from the monasteries uh, just to make those details um, architectural plans. As you can see, even the tiles were, were Redrawn, and um, there is a sec the sections, plans. So actually, this um, architectural documentation looked like uh, the actual constructing plans for um, for building team. So the the process of reconstructing was quite similar to actually building uh, houses uh, with the whole like the full um, architectural documentation. And there was also a lot of um, graphic software, so the geometry was then um, transferred from those uh, plans to uh, to three D models, um, and then the polygons were made. 
So the surface of the, the texture, the, the surface of the, um, of the buildings, materials and equipment, and later there was also um, texturing. So the whole uh, surfaces were covered in uh, dedicated uh, textures, also made on, on the basis of uh, archaeological documentation from the site. So the, the plaster, mud plaster, um, ceramic, um, mud bricks, uh, and all those uh, materials which were actually used to, uh, to make this uh, monastery in real life. Uh, sometimes there are stones, sometimes mud bricks, and um, this is the effect of uh, um, texturing. So that's the final final part. And the last thing was just to um, transfer it, upload it to um, the Sketchfab platform, uh, where it is available for all people, um, both just using the, the browser, so you can like walk through the monastery as we did it today, or with the um, virtual reality in Google's, um, where you can just uh, move to, to the monastery. Um, the last thing um, I was to share with you is to, I was about to share with you is the, our plans and why we actually did that this way. Um, so as I told you, we, we could have done it um, with more details uh, uh, when it in terms of lighting, shades, uh, textures, but uh, what we got in our minds was just to share it with uh, like the biggest audience, which is like available. So um, uh, that's why we used um, that platform with pretty light uh, models. Um, Two hundred megabytes is not so it's not so heavy file actually for uh, um, for even. A, quite bad connection. There are also two versions of these models. You can use uh, high definition and uh, low definition, so it should be OK. Um, by the, the end of the year, we are going to um, to finish uh, also Dongola, uh, old Dongola Monastery. And that's going to be fun, because the, there are all, all those wall paintings which uh, we are putting on the walls, so you could experience uh, the annexes in Old Bangala Monastery. Uh, because as as far as um, today, only these are fully excavated, but uh, that's by the end of the year. And I hope that in the future we, we are going to like collaborate with uh, some other researchers, uh, institutions, and uh, collect those. Uh, those digital models of Nubian heritage sites uh, on that website. So that's, uh, that's for the future. And we are also working on the uh, offline uh, application, uh, which uh, will be more animated. Um, so the, these graphic designers that are working right now on the reconstruction of, uh, reconstruction of monks. So we send them uh, some information about the, the clothing. So uh, the, those Monasteries will be filled with uh, with actual monks roaming around, and um, in this offline application, we'll be able to to join them and uh, also see how this monastery uh, worked. Um, so now we can see like the um, only the spaces, also with equipment, but then we'll be also uh, presenting you some people uh, living inside. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, this offline uh, application will be available for um, I don't know, museums uh, on uh, some conferences um, because that's going to be much heavier, like several gigabytes. So uh, it's not going to be so easily accessible as as it is right now, mm, but much more enjoy enjoyable, I guess. Uh, okay, so that was all for the teaser. Uh, uh, so I encourage you to visit the site and experience experience it for your for your own. Um, yeah, I think uh, I can finish here uh, sharing the the screen. Hello, is there anybody there?
Um, so I don't know if you have any questions. Um, okay, <laughs> thank you. I hope you will enjoy that. Um, thanks. That's uh, actually not my job. It was mostly the the architects I mentioned uh, and the graphic designers. But <laughs> thank you. Um, so that's for the whole team. Uh, And also, at the end of the year, there are going to be um, like a live animation of the life in the monastery. So, um, also, these graphic designers are working on the kind of a short animation uh, showing how these uh, two monasteries uh, worked and how the monks lived their lives in there. Just in case, you can also email me, and so we can find a contact on the Novia Fest, I guess, and also in the Polish Center of Medi. Oh, okay, um, yeah. Um, yeah. So also, uh, you can contact my institution. So. Uh, Polish Center of uh, Mediterranean Archaeology. Uh, I see the this offline application uh, probably on uh, on DVD more than like than, than than CD. But yes, we are going to. We hope that we could bring it to Sudan, and uh, it's going to be available uh, on offline. So these actually you cannot uh, like download and um, use it as virtual reality application without the internet, but this offline application we are working on right now, that would be possible. So I hope that uh, then we could bring it to the remote places where there is no internet, for instance, or slow internet. Uh, I don't know, the, the, the church in um, Old Dongola Monastery was first um, without the dome. Uh, this monastery was built in the seventh century, was so seventh century, so probably as, uh, as early as seventh century. Um, but yeah, you can also contact um, the team. So as Obuski, for instance, because uh, I work mostly with uh, this Islamic period in Sudan. So uh, I'm not an expert in that field, but as Obuski is and also our architects. So, if you have any questions concerning uh, architecture or history of the place, um, yeah, I can like pass your questions to the specialists. Okay, so the Polish Center. Uh, I don't have Twitter, unfortunately. Mm. Um, well, mostly through the um, PCMA fan page on uh, Facebook, I guess. I will also share that one with you. So there are information information of all the projects um, in the Center of Mediterranean Archaeology, but also you will get some information about that one. Um, And always, uh, Alto Lobuski always uh, share it on Twitter. So 
uh, you'll find him uh, somehow. Uh, but yeah, the information are either on the the website of the Polish Center of Mediterranean Archaeology. Um, do you, I mean me personally, or the Polish Center of Mediterranean Archaeology? Uh, I work only in Sudan, uh, but the projects of Polish Center of Mediterranean Archaeology are, are located in several countries uh, around the Mediterranean Sea, and um, in Africa we work in Egypt, Sudan. And there was a mission in uh, Ethiopia. There's a mission in Ethiopia. So, but this project has, uh, like um, applies only to the to the Nubian uh, heritage because it's called uh, virtual Nubia. <laughs> I will come through here if that's okay. Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Let me remove the banner and I will be the banner to encourage people to ask any questions uh, going through their mind because this is a great opportunity um, to see the impact of technology. So as, as the Nubia Initiative, as I uh, mentioned to you when we were in Paris, we were looking at um, working with technology for reconstructing uh, these sites um, and also making them accessible through, you know, uh, like the, the 3D goggles so that if we're having a physical, you know, post. Yeah, no, it's not <laughs> possible. Yes, that's, and that's cool. I tried that and it's really nice. <laughs> To, to feel like you're actually going through the... Yeah, I mean, because I, as I said, it's, it's actually in the VR technology, so uh, all these models are accessible um, this way, so... Doing that in that manner. And it goes back to the impact of technology. So how much would you say, um, and I'm thinking here specifically from the, from the, from the angle of community engagement, how much would mm -hmm. you the necessity of um, being Yay. familiar with technology? Sorry, my sister's dog here is wanting to be part of the conversation. It's okay, Donna. Um, how how, necess like, how necessary is the level of engagement or familiarity with technology if in a project like this, if we are looking to or trying to encourage community engagement in something like that, considering... Mm -hmm to power all together is, <laughs> is not mean, like <laughs> creating such stuff or just using that because well, uh, both i mean using that uh, it's quite easy i mean it's very uh, intuitive uh, like you can roam through that spaces just as in uh, all the computer games actually but yeah creating that uh, reconstructions is quite difficult actually um so all those, also the the software um, used for by graphic designers is probably quite uh, expensive. Uh, so yeah, the whole process. Is it. I, I don't mean like maybe one day I hope, but no, I mean in terms of accessibility to like if if it were going like to be created in goggles form, oh. how accessible would it be to the local communities? Let's say they want to have a festival for mm -hmm. culture. This is something I'm planning for for uh, for the village uh, for my yeah. village. And, Shamalia. and so if we want to have like a tech, um, some form of tech aspect um, mm -hmm. to access these these sites, um, how accessible might that be? So, uh, well, um, we'll see in uh, El Gaddal in Dongola actually in next year, I hope. Uh, but well, first you need to have uh, internet connection as good as to load this up to 100 megabytes uh, models which is not as bad but in the villages in the villages it's quite impossible but now we are working on this offline application and then if you download it somewhere else and bring it on, it on your computer and you also bring goggles uh, yeah it's easy you just need to have uh, you know power and that's okay wow like, like regular outlets uh, and uh, computer uh with uh, yeah, quite good graphic card. Uh, I don't know how expensive that would be, but... Uh, but in the sense that it can be done and then later accessed should there should the internet not be as, as strong? 
Yeah, when we, feel, yeah. When, we yeah. when we finish with this offline application, then yes, uh, it will be available to to download it somewhere, I guess. And then it's you can bring it everywhere with your, with your computer and your goggles. What has been the most exciting part of this project for you personally? Um, I don't know. I was just sort of a manager, but uh, yeah, I think that the graphic designers get fun uh, with when they, you know they first they got these plans for architects, and then uh, we saw that uh, that final effect, and that was really cool. And um, yeah, when you use goggles and you can move inside, and um, even though you know the side. You know, Ghazali Monastery, for instance, but you get lost anyway because it's totally different experience when the, the buildings are standing up and you don't know where you are because you got lost in this wow. of, of the corridors. And it's really cool. <laughs> I can't wait to try it. Friends, family, lovers of Nubia, wherever you're tuned in from the world, have you tried, have you had the experience of VR goggles in any way? And what site or um, part, perhaps, or uh, temple would you like to go through uh, through VR? What what more would you like to see? What other sites? As as they um, come through with that, hopefully, some will answer us because we do have a few. Um, the numbers are still going up. Um, what can we say? I do want to take a moment and acknowledge Arthur um, for for the work he's done. I I came across him in two different ways and two different directions. Um, was it in 2018? I was consulting for a European Commission funded project mm -hmm. called Axis, and we were working a lot with um, with ERC and Marie Curie and in the announcements of the ERC grantees, I think it was in 2017, no, 18, when yeah. the grant came through and I was like, that name sounds familiar, that name sounds familiar, that name sounds familiar. And I click and I was like, oh, it's because we're following on Twitter and then we meet in, in Paris. And really the, the, the work that's being done and the encouragement for um, decolonized archaeology in, in the sense of engaging the local community and working with the local community um, is such an important factor and I'm so grateful for the emphasis on that. Okay, we have Joseph Turner. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, you need to ask the team working there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you know, we are best in uh, medieval and Islamic Nubia. Uh, well, if you were to see another temple, which one would you go? Outside your scope, I mean, uh, you're familiar at least with the work that's happening in different sites. Is there one that you would be curious or interested in exploring oh. through VR? I don't know. This, this stuff in Musawa Sufra, for instance, because it's so strange, it would be nice to have it reconstructed. Uh -huh. uh, Naga. Yeah, these are quite extraordinary temples and buildings. That would be nice. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, it would. And hopefully one day we can have like a full library at least to encourage the the, the youth specifically to make those journeys, to go back, yeah. to, uh, to connect. Um, for those in the diaspora, it's so important to be able to have access to something like that. Uh, do we have any more questions, or do you have any any last comments to to share with us? Will you be joining us for what? Do, what can we expect for Nubia Fest twenty twenty one? What would you be sharing with us then, as far as this project goes? Um, I don't know. Oh, um, I guess sure. Something. I mean, something from um, uh, Grand I hope, or from this community engagement. Uh, stuff we are working on, and also uh, you know the Dongola uh, monastery will be also um, finished by the next year. So, so we would be maybe we'd have a presentation about that. Yeah, I will look forward to it. I definitely will look forward to it. And we are saying there is the next panel starting. Well, if we don't have any more comments or questions, then please join me in. Thanking Magic for his presentation.
for his work, for the team's work. We extend the gratitude to the whole team and to the Polish Center. Um, the work you're doing with the local communities, both in uh, Egypt and in Sudan. And I also read that in, in Ethiopia, uh, there is a scholarship for engaging Ethiopian students in the mm -hmm. in theology, which is amazing. And we definitely need more of that. We need more um, scholarly opportunities uh, for the local researchers and students to engage in this fantastic work. So thank you and please extend our gratitude to the whole team. Thank you, thank you very much. Friends, we will be back with another presentation very shortly. Um, in fact, if you just refresh the page, we will come back with a presentation from Dr. Selma Abdelgader. Thank you and Afia Logo.